Hi, welcome, welcome to, to Ability, Ability Fierce. Fierce. My name is Michael Astor. Today we have a special show. Uh, instead of having a guest in the studio, I went out on the street to talk to some people protesting Medicaid cuts outside Governor Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo's New York City office. And we learned a lot about the issues facing the disabled and about the harm these cuts are going to do to people and really harming their lives and their ability to get around and be part of society. And a lot of the stuff that they talked about was how hard it is to get a job and how much discrimination there is against disabled people, how people see someone in a wheelchair and assume they're uh, not right mentally, and how there's all sorts of assumptions and stigma attached. And, you know, it, it was a good talk. I learned a lot. And I think they learned about Ability Fierce and my idea of an abilities revolution. And the abilities revolution is a pretty simple concept. It's that we're going to get the disabled people the services they're entitled to in a timely and dignified manner. Because there are a lot of services available, but it's almost like the whole system conspires to deny these services to you. The bureaucracy is complicated. The people in charge tend to deny the services as a way of saving money. So only the people who really fight and, you know, fight for these services get them. You know, and there's like an appeals process brought in, but could you imagine if you have to go to this appeals process? And these things take years and people go, well, you know, it takes years. Um, that's a pet peeve I have lately is when people go, well, it is what it is. No, we have to fix this and we have to make it something great. We have, we have to, to make, make it, it something, something that works for people and is not humiliating and that brings us up as a society and brings and, and helps make disabled people a contributing part of society. And that makes us all better. And that makes society better. And that helps, um, and helps build you know, the kind of society I believe we need. Thinking about what this means to, like, when they talk about saving money, are they thinking about what's happening to the people who are affected? No, no, it's a bottom line. It's a bottom line. And I'm talking about my life. And my bottom line is trying to save my life. And that bottom line is trying to, you know, erase me from the budget. Mm -hmm. Saving money doesn't save my life. It kills my life. Cuomo, Cuomo, one, two, three, the Medicaid cuts are killing me. Cuomo, Cuomo, one, two, three, the Medicaid cuts are killing me. We're out here, we're protesting Medicaid cuts because they affect all of us in a very real way. And, you know, I, we know that there's a budget and the budget is necessary, but it has to be a true budget. And it has to be uh, properly accounted for and properly reported. And this, the way that it's going now, it's a lie, not being reported properly, and it affects us all in a very real way. Yeah. And it makes it makes for cuts that affect our lives. It cuts into the, our well-being, it cuts into our lives, and how we are able to uh, live and what happens to us. Yeah, could you tell me like specific examples of how those cuts affect you? Well, you have like uh, you have uh, cuts with our aides for the hours you know that some of us need and, and require. Uh, the aides are we're not able to have the amount of hours of help that we need, mm -hmm. and so it leaves us to fend for ourselves, mm -hmm. which a lot of us can't. Some of us can. We're fortunate enough to be able to require not so much help, but there are people who require a lot of help, and the cuts cut into their hours of the uh, assistance that they can get. Our lives are challenged. Right. Pretty much. It's, it's challenged, but with, with these cuts, it makes it even that much more of a challenge. Some of these things go without saying. Definitely. These are things that every day that we deal with as far as the stress and the worry and the concern and the challenges. But with these cuts that are coming, it just compounds that and it makes it much more it makes it much worse now you see what i don't understand is i think if they made it like that disabled people got what they were entitled to then everything would work better for everybody it would create jobs and you could be more vital in the community and stuff like that well what see what, what they have to do is level the graph mm -hmm. you know you have to level things off so if you have you know when you make it so that 
just level it, you know, so that we can have a fighting chance. Right, right. Like if you get accommodations that make it so you're more able than disabled, right? You get a play, a level playing field, right? Yes. And that's better for everybody, isn't it? Well, of course, it, it's better for everybody because if the more the more you make, uh, just uh, for instance, if you have uh, places that are accessible. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say you make a workplace accessible, a workplace, you know, with, with the accommodations that we need. There, there's more that we can do for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that you don't feel like you have to do for us. Unfortunately, people with disabilities are looked at like patients. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. Okay, cat. And the Medicaid cat. And the Medicaid cat. No, you know, the, the misuse of Medicaid, the misuse of funds, mm -hmm. okay? First of all, it's not the misuse that we are doing. People with disabilities are not misusing the funds. Who's misusing the funds are the people that supposedly are getting all of these grants so that they can help us. In the meantime, they don't. In the meantime, they take away a lot of our programs. But yet, they're still surviving with their organizations because those organizations are getting funds that should be helping us but they're not. So what happens is, who's the whipping boy? The whipping boy is us. They figure you are the guys that are misusing it. And we, are, we, we fall under that category because we're not the ones that, if they were giving, let's say, the funds to people with disabilities, and then we will put it into an account, let's say, for using for supply, for using for a wheelchair, then we would be accountable for that. For the people that are accountable for it are the people that we don't know what the funds are being used for. I know. Doctors depend on you. Better funding for better care. Better funding for better, funding for better care. Society thinks that people with disabilities are a burden, and that's not the case. Mm -hmm. It's just because of the way they've structured everything. Mm -hmm. The government itself, federally, mm -hmm. state and citywide, because HRA is another headache altogether. But HRA is a stepping stone to everything that we need as well. Mm -hmm. And we're not a burden on society if we're trained and properly it's cared for the way that these programs were meant to do. Mm -hmm. But they decide on what to do because as Milagro said before, if it doesn't affect you, they're not going to care about it. And it's not front and center, they're not going to care about it. I recently said that the governor should have more sense of self personally because he's been through personal issues lately that affect health, that affect health. So it should be more relevant to him that services are available, regardless of whether you have a disability or not. Unfortunately, the disabled population is more affected than the rest on all levels of government, all the time. Ban the Medicaid cap. Ban the Medicaid cap. Ban the Medicaid cap. Ban the Medicaid cap. What do the Medicaid cuts mean for your life? Um, not being able to get up and go to work, because that's what I do every day. Without the assistance of my attendant, mm -hmm. she helps me with my shoes, my socks, uh, cooking, uh, stuff that I need that I can't do myself. Uh, and, and if I lose the Medicaid, she also loses the job. She'll end up on, on, um, on food stamps yeah, and yeah. all that stuff. So they're not just screwing me, they're screwing my worker who I've known for like three decades. Pay tax. Ban the Medicaid cap. Ban the Medicaid cap. Ban the Medicaid cap. They didn't even look at my face. They, they saw that chair, that liability. Uh, she probably can't think. She probably is crazy. She, they, a whole bunch of stuff. Before they even say hello, mm -hmm. they say, uh oh, there's somebody here with a disability for a job. Oh, no good. Right. You know, I mean, this is how you, it is. And the thing is also that if people don't see us in any jobs, then why do we want the independence? If they don't see us in stores, why don't, do they want independence? 
If they don't see buildings that are made accessible for people in the society that are disabled, if they don't see that, then why do they want to be independent? Mm -hmm. So therefore, one thing feeds the other. If they don't see anybody that is disabled doing anything with the society, then there's no reason for independence. Right. There's no reason for keeping us alive. I, I, that's what I wanted to say because yeah, no, one thing fits the other. Cuomo, Cuomo, one, two, three. The Medicaid cuts are killing me. Cuomo, Cuomo, one, two, three. The Medicaid cuts are killing me. People think that just because you have one specific disability, it affects everything. And that just makes no sense. No, people have no come sense. up to me with my son sitting next to me and say, and they can, I, can I talk to him? Yeah. Like, yeah. What yeah. does that mean? It's a, I don't know what that means. I, oh. I know what that means in their mind. It's, it's, no, no. I mean, because if we could talk about all kinds of stuff, it all affects every kind of level because eh, employment too. He has something to do with that too. I've been trying to get a driver's license for years, mm -hmm. but access VR has been my detriment ever since I got my college education. Through their help, mm -hmm. access VR has still been my detriment when it comes to getting a license and employment. I have tried with them for years and it's been complicated. And then they want to take credit when you get a position, when you get somewhere, we got the funding for it. This is where the numbers come in. We're not just numbers and statistics. There are people behind the numbers and statistics that you're affecting every time you make a cut or every time you say we did something for you. But you didn't do anything for me. I did it on my own because you want me to advocate for myself, but you're not providing the advocacy to help me do the advocacy tools to do what I have to do. I learned all this on my own. Cuomo, Cuomo, one, two, three. The Medicaid cuts are killing me. Cuomo, Cuomo, one, two, three. The Medicaid cuts are killing me. Right. Now, if they made it, if they got all the benefits and stuff in place and they worked well, you could be working and you could be doing stuff, right? Yeah, exactly, yes. Yeah, so why are they being so short-sighted? I don't know, yeah, well, they don't have the patience I need to, to yeah, I'm trying, I have patience with my life and I'm trying to survive. And I need the support to help, you know, me, you know, deal with all my life tragedies and stuff like that. Yeah, man. I got problem breathing, I have problem uh, strokes, a lot of things going on. I, I don't want to be in this situation, but I am. And I'm doing the best I can. And I want to just throw my life away, yeah. I went to Long Island University uh -huh. and when I wanted to move on the dorms, they told me no at first because they didn't think I could take care of myself. Mm -hmm. I had to write a pros and cons list to show that I could take care of myself uh, in order for them to let me into the dorm. With Mammoth? No, right here at LIU. Oh, okay. And yeah. I got in, but I had to fight to get in. <coughs> and uh, a few years later, a young lady with cerebral palsy, hers was a little more severe. It was similar to cerebral palsy, but it wasn't cerebral palsy. They told they told her no, so I told her what to do, and she got in. Good. Because we had to, you know, no, yell. No, you have to fight, but you shouldn't yeah. have to fight. When I when I went to LIU, I I wouldn't use an aid because I was being stubborn. Mm -hmm. But now. My CP is a little more difficult, so now I use an aid and I can't imagine being able to put on my shoes without her because I can't reach my feet anymore because I'm spastic. Yeah, I so, know. It, it, these issues get complicated. Yeah, as you get older, the, the, the CP gets worse a little bit here and there. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. But the point is that you're a vital person and you're getting out and you yeah. went to college and you're doing stuff. Everything is difficult. Everything. And to get a special accommodation in the classroom and all of that, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah.
they if, won't accommodate. Well, That's the I'm other saying thing. we got accommodations are another thing. We got to change the dynamic. It's all, mm. This isn't working. We got to change it. Yeah. Yeah, but and it's they, not going they, to be easy. It should start at the top, but nobody has that. Yeah, well, and they're the one, and that's the thing. The people in office are the ones that have the disability, actually, because they don't want to open up their mind. Hey, Cuomo, Cuomo, one, two, three. The Medicaid cuts are killing me. Cuomo, Cuomo, one, two, three. The Medicaid cuts are killing me. We're fully functioning people. You know, our brains work fine, we function fine, just as long as we have a level playing field. Right, right. So, what do you think they're thinking? Don't they see that this is something that they should be doing, that they should be taking pride well, in? Well, I don't know what they're thinking. You know, I know as myself, as a person who acquired my disability, before my disability, I wasn't thinking about people with disabilities. Yeah, isn't that uh, funny? Well, now it is. I mean, but you know, but before before my disability, I didn't think about it. Right. You know, and if I if I did think about it, I didn't think about it in a proper way. That I now know better. I now know better that people with disabilities they are individuals. They are capable. They are, they function fine. They may just have you know parts of them that don't work well. But they function fine, and um, this is something that people need to see. Cuomo, Cuomo, one, two, three, the Medicaid cuts are killing me. Cuomo, Cuomo, one, two, three, the Medicaid cuts are killing me. Cuomo, Cuomo, one, two, three, the Medicaid cuts are killing me. Cuomo, Cuomo, one, two, three. People think that because you have a disability, your mind is affected, and that's not always the, even if it is that does not mean that the mind is not working you know and I just it annoys the hell out of me it really does I, I, I hear you just because you sit in a wheelchair doesn't mean it's not working over here mm -hmm. or you have an assistive device such as a walker or a crunch mm -hmm. or a brace it does not mean that your intellect has been affected also, you have to understand uh, what's happening. Also, that a lot of a lot of organizations are getting money for uh, handling or being with people with disabilities. Yet, the only people that they are dealing with are people that are cognitively as, uh, and perhaps uh, coming in with disabilities from birth, but are not not mobility dealing with mobility because in mobility they have to spend money on widening doorways you know there's certain cosmetic things that they have to do to their side so what they say yeah let's just put down that we deal with people with disability that we're helping them when in the long run they just have certain people as long as they walk they don't have to make changes to bathroom they don't have to make changes to many things they don't have to deal with ordering wheelchairs so therefore all of those funds that they're getting supposedly for taking care of all the people is not it's BS. Until it affects them directly or a family member, they don't care. They won't they won't know until it affects them directly. You, you don't think about these things until you have to think about it. And then you know the other thing that gets me is that all this stuff causes you stress. Like even if the cuts don't come I'm not saying they're not going to come, but if they don't come, you're still worried and you still got to get out here and you still got to hustle to... Yes, and, and I'm doing my best to stay off of as many benefits as I have to. Um, so the, the benefits that I do use, it's because I really need them. It's not because I, I don't, I don't, I want to be lazy. It's because I honestly really need them. And a lot of people in the community, if they didn't need the services, we wouldn't be here complaining about them. But we obviously need the services, and in the long run, it's cheaper to keep us in the community than in nursing homes. It's a death sentence if you're sent to a nursing home and you don't have a family member to check on you. They don't, they, they don't, they don't take care of you. They don't turn you over. I have a friend in a nursing home. He told me he was on the bedpan for four hours. And and you're in a nursing home and you're on a bedpan for four hours. What does that do to your skin? His skin breaks down, more issues. They cause it. Mm -hmm. I hear you. It, it's terrible. No, it is. It, and that's how they save the money, by killing you off. Yeah. Cuomo, stop the cuts! Cuomo, stop the cuts! 
My disability does not define me. Mm -hmm. It's just a part of me, but it's not the whole part of me. What they should do is actually live in a home care facility for a month and see what it's like, or live with the disability for, I said a week, but that won't do anything because they'll be like, no one's gonna watch because no cameras are gonna look. They'll be like, oh yeah, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. And that's it. But it should be recorded with everybody that can, because it was try, tried before. Somebody tried something before, having people use wheelchairs, and they were like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But nobody knows it unless you're in it. And I've always known that. This is a very lonely time for a lot of people that are disabled because their families yes. don't want them, don't want them to be at their home or whatever. So they go to a restaurant to, let's say, try to get uh, at some turkey dinner, and restaurants are not accessible, or they don't want to bother with you. You know, the bathrooms are not accessible, so you can get to the bathroom. It, it becomes, you know, this is a very lonely time. And the Medicaid cap. And the Medicaid cap. I'll tell you, I I told everybody I wore the gloves, the red gloves, because I say that Governor Cuomo has his, our blood on his hands. That's my own joke. I mm -hmm. don't care. You don't have to put that. I like it. Okay, give me go. No, I mean, I like stuff that's a little bit stick it to the... I, I don't have a problem with sticking it. Yeah. I just want them to realize what it's doing. Because they're sticking it to you. All the time. So we learned a lot about the issues facing the disabled, the harm that's really threatening them. That when people talk about cuts, they're actually talking about harming the disabled. Let's, let's not joke about this and pretend that these cuts are going to be anything less than harmful. And we at Ability Fierce want to document this and show the actual harm that's being done by bureaucrats who will say, cover it up and saying, we're saving money or we're changing the rate adjustment or the calculation for this, that, and the other. The point is that if you're entitled to these services and benefits and you need these services and benefits to help you to be a part of society, a vital part of society to flourish, then this should be the bottom line. You should be charged with providing services that people can use in a timely and dignified manner. And not, you know, cheap, bad second-rate services, first-rate services that allow people to be just on an even, even playing field. And, um, you know, when that happens, everyone is helped by that. Um, everybody is served when the disabled are helped because they become part of the community, they stimulate the economy when they start to work, when they make jobs for people, helping them they contribute and you're going to be disabled probably at some point as you get older you know you get older dementia is a big problem stairs become a big problem as you get older and there's nothing to say that you can't have a car accident that leaves you in a wheelchair after you watch this show or an aneurysm and you know when a loved one uh, suffers one of these terrible events and i don't wish this upon anybody you suddenly are plunged into this scary world, first, that your loved one is hurt, and, but all this bureaucracy that makes no sense. Even to the people who have been dealing with it for years, it makes no sense. It's hard to deal with. I'm on all these listservs where people compare notes and are trying to understand new regulations, and then you understand the regulation better than the bureaucrat, perhaps, but the bureaucrat doesn't believe you understand it better. And there's a certain uh, reflexive, deny the services, see if the people fight, because if they don't fight, you save some money by not giving them. That's not acceptable. That's not acceptable. And then things are being turned around on their head. You know, I saw a video of, the, um, of this Ted Kastner, the director or the commissioner of the office for people with developmental disabilities, 
saying that um, this program that's very good and very successful, self-direction, was, um, what was it he's saying? It was like unevenly distributed, which is sort of true, right? You know, it's, it's this kind of Trumpian idea that you take something that's true and then you take it out of context and take it the wrong way. It's unevenly distributed because people don't know about it. It's very hard to use. So the people who tend to use it tend to be better educated and better off. And in America today, in our society, that means white. I'm doing this at Brick TV Studios in Brooklyn, and I meet a lot of people of color who have disabled children who don't know about a tenth of the uh, services that are available. This isn't by accident. And it's not acceptable to say because they don't know about this and other people do, that they, we should all be brought down to the level of the people who don't know it and everyone should suffer. No, everyone should be brought up to the level of the people who know about it. When you have a disabled kid, the services should come to you. When the services fail, that should be on the government or the people providing services, not on the disabled people and their family. It's enough of a hit to be disabled. And then you have to get hit by this bureaucracy. You have to get insulted by these administrators who say you're trying to access things that you don't deserve because nobody chooses to be disabled. And let's get this system working and let's make this a better place for everybody. So let's try to change the dynamic and get a system that works for the disabled and um, build this up so that we can have an abilities revolution. Thank you for watching Ability Fierce. Uh, we have uh, Assemblyman Robert Carroll is going to be on the next episode. We're really looking forward. He was very helpful when my son Nick was trying to get his accommodations at SUNY Purchase, and he's going to talk to us about a bill he has in to help people with dyslexia. So thank you, and um, we'll see you next week. Thank you.